Hey guys, it's Natalie and I'm doing the first year at Hogwarts tag. Um, I wasn't tagged myself, but I saw it on the channel Reads with Cassara, who I will link down in the description. And I watched her video and I thought it was so much fun. And I thought, you know what? I am tagging myself because I want to do this one. There is a Harry Potter tag going around, but this one is a little bit different and it's a little bit shorter too. So this won't be a super long video, but I think it'll be a super fun video. So let's get started. Okay, after receiving your Hogwarts letter, you and your family hastily go down to Diagon Alley. Which shop grabs your attention first? Well, I had to think about that and then I thought, oh my gosh, I know exactly which shop that would be. I would have to go to Ollivander's because I would need to get... I would need to get my wand. And I actually did go down to Ollivander's and get my wand when I went down to Universal Studios. Um, there is a different wand that I was assigned on Pottermore. I don't know how many of you guys are on Pottermore where you can find out what your wand is, but you can't actually go into Ollivander's and get that specific wand. So they had about 15 or 16 different wands that were not character replicas. I didn't want to get a character replica. I wanted my own wand. And so I picked this bad boy up just because I thought it looked really cool. It's a snake. It wasn't until after we bought it that I went, oh, and it's also got a skeleton on it. But definitely, I think, wouldn't most people want to go get their wand first? Maybe not, but that's my answer for that one. All right, the next question is, after rereading your letter, you realize you may bring a cat, an owl, or a toad with you to Hogwarts. And the question is, what would you bring and what would you name your animal? And because I'm a very big weirdo, I would actually bring the toad. I love frogs and toads and snakes and reptiles. I'm very weird that way. So I would bring a toad and um, I think I would name him Toby. I think I would call him Toby the Toad. I think that would be really, really cute. So that's my answer for that one. All right, you arrive at King's Cross Station to get on the Hogwarts Express and you don't know anybody. So you have three options. One, you can sit in a compartment all by yourself and double check that you have everything you need. Or two, you can find a compartment that has four or five wizards already in there who are playing with trading cards. The third option is to find a compartment with one wizard sitting by themselves. And I definitely wouldn't go sit by myself and double check that I had all my stuff because that sounds really, really responsible and I'm not really that kind of responsible. Um, I'm not extroverted to bust up into some compartment with four or five wizards that might have known each other their whole lives and that would just be a little intimidating. So I would do what Harry did and I would find a compartment where there was one wizard that maybe also didn't know anybody and I would sit down and hopefully they would become my best friend in the whole world or my Hogwarts best friend. Next question is you are giving a timetable with all the classes that you are going to take. Which of the following would you most look forward to taking? and this is sort of a long list so bear with me. You have transfiguration, you have charms, you have potions, you have history of magic, you have defense against the dark arts, and you have astronomy, herbology, and flying lessons. I know that was kind of a long list. So the one ones I would be most looking forward to would be one the flying lessons because I love adventure, I love roller coasters, and flying on those broomsticks sounds super fun to me. I think I also would like the history of magic. I just think I would be very interesting to find out, you know, what the history of magic. I would definitely choose that one. I think maybe transfiguration as well, turning one thing into another would be something that I'd be looking forward to. So maybe those three would be the ones I would really look forward to. Oh wait, I really like astronomy. Okay, so four. Those would be the four. I also wanted to do the astronomy one. So those are the four that I would really be looking forward to. All right, the next question is, it's your first weekend at Hogwarts. What do you spend the weekend doing? And there's several options. So let's look at these options. You can go to the library and study ahead because you know you can't ever study too much. You can explore the castle and grounds with your new friends. You can chill in your common room playing chess with your new friends. The last option is you can find a cozy spot in the castle and sit down and read and eat snacks. Well, I have to think back that if I'm going to Hogwarts that I'm a kid or a teenager, so I definitely would do the exploring the castle with my friends. I definitely wouldn't be studying ahead. I mean, reading a book sounds nice now that I'm a little bit older, but I don't think as a teenager that would be something that would even cross my mind. Um, and I don't think I'd just be playing chess. I like to explore new places. Every time we've had to move, I'm the person who gets in the car and drives around and finds new places. I would want to explore Hogwarts and see everything that I could see. A few weeks have passed. So which classes have become your best classes and which classes have become your worst classes? 
Well, I'm going to assume the four that I mentioned, I think it was Transfiguration, Astronomy, History of Magic, and Flying Lessons. Hopefully I'm doing well in those because if I'm really motivated and engaged in the topic, then I usually will do well. But one class that I think, well, there's two classes I think I would not be too good at is, I don't think I would be good at potions because that sounds like a cross between like chemistry and cooking. And I'm not good at either one of those. I would be the person who would always get the potion wrong because I would be slightly off and it would just be a disaster. So, and Snape teaches that. So, and he would probably intimidate the mess out of me. So potions would be something I'd probably dread going to. And herbology, even though, I don't think I'd be good at herbology either. I'm not really good with plants. When my husband and I were younger and he was in the military and he'd go away, his plants would always die. I would always, it wasn't that I didn't take care of them, I would over take care of them, like I would over water them. Usually people would be like, you drown them. So potions and herbology would probably be the two classes that I would be maybe needing a tutor for. I really messed up and I forgot the question about what house would you be sorted into? Um, so I would assume that I would be sorted into either Gryffindor or Ravenclaw. That's what I would be going in thinking, you know, I'm, I'm pretty brave. Like I said, I like the thrilling things and I'm pretty smart. So those would probably be the two that I would be thinking one or the other, right? But then when they put the sorting hat on me, I would be totally surprised because I would find out that I am a Hufflepuff. Oh, you can see my notes. I am a Hufflepuff. And it will take me a while to come to terms with the fact that I'm a Hufflepuff. In real life, when I found out that I was a Hufflepuff, that's exactly what happened. I thought I was going to be a Ravenclaw or a Gryffindor. And when I got Hufflepuff, I actually took the test like three or four times because I just knew that it was wrong. And Hufflepuff came up every single time. And I actually watched videos, there are videos on YouTube going, you know, it's okay that you're a Hufflepuff and they try to tell you what's so great about Hufflepuff. And Hufflepuffs are known as being very, very loyal and they are very, very kind and they accept others. So over time I realized, okay, yeah, I'm a Hufflepuff, that fits. But it would take me a while to come to terms with that. But I'm cool with it now. In fact, when I went down to Universal Studios, I even painted my nails yellow and black. So I was that much into it. So sorry, I skipped that question. That's a very important question. That was actually one of the questions I look forward to hearing other people answer. So sorry about that. All right, let's get back to the rest of the questions. Next question is the first Quidditch game is coming up and it's between your house and your house's number one rival. And you have a potions exam on Monday. So you have a bunch of choices you need to figure out what you're going to do with this whole situation. First, let me mention I know that Hufflepuff has like the worst Quidditch team out of all of them. Um, so I always said that I would love to play Quidditch, but I'm not really the sports kind of person. But being that I'm in Hufflepuff, I might actually have a shot of being on the team. So I'm also going to assume that I've made the Hufflepuff team. The first option is you go to the game because who cares about potions, obviously. The second option is you go to the game, but you make up the studying later in the day. The third option is you don't go to the Quidditch game and you just spend all that time studying. Well, I can't pick number three because I just put myself on the team, so I have to play. I know I'm totally taking this question and making it my own. Um, so I would definitely go to the game and play in the game, and I'm sure we would lose. Um, and then I would study later. That makes sense to me. Doesn't it make sense to you? All right, the last question is that Christmas is here. And are you going to go home to your family or are you going to stay at Hogwarts because so many of your friends are staying at Hogwarts for Christmas? And I have to say, this is one of the things in the books and the movies that always really confused me. I completely understood why Harry Potter would stay there. Why would he want to go back to the Dursleys? But like Ron and Hermione have nice big family, well, nice families. Ron has a big family and Hermione I think is an only child, but still she has a nice loving family and Christmas is such a, I don't know, it's a big deal in my family and it's a big deal in most families. I can't imagine just saying, oh, mom, I'm just going to stay at Hogwarts. Uh, my mom would not be cool with that. She'd be like, uh, no, you're getting your butt home because it's Christmas. So I think what I would do, if I had all these friends for some reason, I guess maybe I have a whole, maybe I'm friends with Harry Potter, I don't know. But if I was in that situation where I had all these friends that were staying at Hogwarts because they had nowhere to go over Christmas, I think the best option would be I would still go home, but I would just bring them with me. Because I think that would be cool. Because, I don't know, staying around a castle, even if it's Hogwarts, which is super cool, over Christmas, I just, I don't know, something about that just never seemed right to me. 
Now you're probably wondering, who am I going to tag? I am tagging everybody out there who you know who you are, who love Harry Potter. And I watch so many of your videos, you know, because you see me making the little comments. I know which one of you are really into Harry Potter and which ones of you aren't so much into Harry Potter. And if you are one of the people that are into Harry Potter, I really hope you do this tag at some point. I know we have so many videos that we have lined up and sometimes we line them up way in advance. So, you know, it's fine if you don't do this tag for like a month or two. I know when I did the rapid fire book tag, I did it quite a while ago and there's still people who are just now posting uh, the videos of people I tagged and that's fine, but I would just love to know what houses you guys are in and just what your answers would be because I think this is a really fun tag. So I'm about to do my booktuber shout out for this video, but I wanted to let all of you guys know the booktuber I shout out always knows ahead of time that they're going to be shouted out. So there's no surprises because I was thinking, if one of you guys out there who I talk to regularly was doing this, I would be like, oh, I'm going to have to watch every single one of their videos because don't you know, the one video I don't watch, that will be the one video that they shout me out and I miss it and I don't even get to make a comment and I don't want anybody to miss when they're being shouted out. So the person I'm about to shout out has known for about a week that they're going to get a shout out. So you will always know ahead of time if you're the booktuber shout out person. All right, so the booktuber shout out that I'm doing for this video is the Argyle Dinosaur. The Argyle Dinosaur is one of the funniest booktubers, if not the funniest booktuber that I have ever seen. If you have not watched her channel, you are missing a key part of the magic that is booktube. She actually has gotten me twice where I've been in my pajamas watching her videos, drinking coffee, and she has said something so funny and so random that I wasn't expecting her to say something funny or random that I've spit out my coffee and it's like gotten all over my pajamas. So if I had nicer clothes on, I would probably be sending her my dry cleaning bill. But you really need to check it out. I told her she needs to be a stand-up comic because she just has this dry humor. It's not like she's going on her channel and she's trying to be funny. She's just being herself. But when she starts talking about things and goes on a, you know, a tangent about something, it usually is really funny. She just like has this dry humor about her and she really is just fun. She had um, she has a dinosaur that's in her end card and she let us all get to pick the name for her dinosaur. Well, she did a poll of five different dinosaur names. We all got to vote on the name of the dinosaur at the end of her video. And I thought, I love this. I love people who are not afraid to be silly and have fun. I did not win, but I did get to vote. So that's what matters. And the name that I really did not like didn't win either. But please check out the Argyle Dinosaur. You will not regret it. She is a trip. And she's also really, really smart. I mean, some of her videos, uh, I remember a video she did quite recently where she was talking about TV shows that she would like to see crossovers. And the one that really stuck with me was, she said Sherlock Holmes and Dexter. And then she set up what it would be like. And I was like, wow, she really thinks a lot and she's very, very smart. So please check her out. You'll really enjoy her channel. She will obviously be linked down in the description. Also, I wanted to remind you guys that I am finally on Twitter, which is really exciting. It still really intimidates me, but I've been watching those YouTube tutorials to learn how to use it a little bit better. I had an Instagram before, I just haven't bothered to do much with it. So now that is up and I now actually use that as well and I actually post on it, so that's exciting. So please check out those, uh, please check out my Instagram and my Twitter as well. And if you follow me or what is it follow, right? If you follow me and I see that you're following, then I will follow you right back and we can be on Twitter and Instagram together and it'll be a big beautiful thing. So that's all I have for now. The next thing I'm going to be doing, I think on Tuesday I'm going to be dropping a video about anticipated mystery thriller releases that will be coming out very very soon. I believe my Gimme Five or More on Thursday, I think, I think, I'm going to be doing historical fiction but I have not 100% decided that's what it's going to be so don't lock in on that. That's just what I think I'm going with that. But for the most part my videos are coming out Saturday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. That's what I try to stick with as best as I can but you know life happens and you know you can only do the best that you can do. But anyway thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you liked what you saw and you've never subscribed before and I will check you guys out later. Bye-bye.